Hey everyone, Daniel here again. In the last NetLogo video, we learned a lot about the NetLogo user interface and how to create buttons. We also learned about the code tab and how to create that, those setup and go procedures. And we were actually able to create some turtles and have them start moving around on their landscape. In this video, we're going to build on top of that, add a little more complexity to our models. So we're going to modify some of the existing code we have, but we're also going to start adding in some of our own agent attributes. We're also going to add in some new sub procedures, which are procedures that go within the structure of those uh, setup and go procedures. Then we're going to add a few new coding terms. So uh, we're going to use if conditionals and random number generators to start making some things happen in our models. So in the last video, we already learned how to change some attributes of our agents, such as changing their color and or shape. We are now going to learn how to define more attributes. In this case, however, we are making an attribute that the turtles own. It is essentially a variable that turtles have the ability to modify throughout the model run. At the top of our code above setup, we will write turtles hyphen own, and then in, in between square brackets type illness. This means turtles own an attribute called illness, which they can either gain or lose depending on how illness appears later on in other procedures. Since all turtles own illness, we are going to make it so illness is something that is modified when the model starts. In the setup procedure, under the create turtles code, we are going to add a line that says set illness zero. We add this at the bottom of the list of turtle attributes after set color blue. We make sure it is inside the square brackets. We'll modify this later on in the next video. Now, outside of the square brackets within the setup procedure, we are going to add another line of code to show that some of the turtles are already infected at the start of the model. To show that a turtle is infected, we are going to change their shape and color. For now, we'll just add a line of code at the bottom of the setup procedure to ask 10 turtles bracket, set color yellow, set shape X, set size 1.5, closing bracket. Make sure the set codes are in brackets. This tells the model to change the color of 10 randomly selected turtles to the color yellow and to the shape of an X. Our code is starting to get a little more complicated, so it will help if we can start breaking that code up a little more. So that we're going to do that using sub procedures. So in this case, we're going to uh, take the movement code that we uh, built in the last video and we're going to move it to its own sub procedure. Uh, so if you work along with me here, um, if you'll remember in the inside the go procedure, we have ask turtles, right turn, random 360, forward one. Now we want to keep that, but we want to move that to a sub procedure. So I'm going to actually call that move. So if you remember how to build procedures, we're going to, uh, we're going to say to move and then put, go ahead and put our end closing, uh, closing there. Now we want everything that, that's in here. I'm just going to type it out, but you're welcome to copy and paste if you want to do that. But we're just going to say, uh, uh, say again, ask turtles, open bracket, right turn, random 360, forward one. And then we're going to close our bracket. Uh, so that is essentially now a sub procedure that is going to make the turtles move. Now we want to call that sub procedure in the Go code. So in the Go structure, right after we have tick, we want to say move. And it's as simple as just typing out move. Um, so now every time the go procedure runs, which is going to be once per tick, it is going to call that move procedure. So it'll tick and then it'll have all the turtles move once. Now that we have programmed the turtles on how to move, we also want them to interact. As we all know, interacting with others is how disease is spread. What we are going to do here is to make it so that if an infected turtle is within a certain radius of a non-infected turtle, then there is a chance that the non-infected turtle will get the disease. So we are going to make another sub procedure called by Go, called infect. First, we will add in the Go procedure, infect in the line under move, because we want turtles to first move and to next infect. Underneath the move procedure, we will write out the infect sub procedure. Write to infect and remember to drop down a line or two and add end at the bottom of the procedure. This bit of code has several nested levels of commands so that at the bottom, we end up with several rows of brackets. Be sure to pay careful attention to how the brackets are used as we demonstrate writing the code on screen. 
Now, the first thing we need to do is to see if there are any infected turtles around. So we'll write ask turtles and then add square brackets. Push enter so that the second bracket is a couple lines below. We'll do this for each of the following commands. Then on the following line, type if color equals yellow. When we use if in the code, that is known as a conditional. In other words, if the conditional is met, then the next action written into the code will take place. We ask the turtles if their color is yellow. This makes it so the model finds all of the infected yellow turtles, and then we will ask the infected turtles to do something else. So if their color equals yellow, then inside another set of square brackets, we will type ask turtles in dash radius 10. This asks the yellow turtles if there are any other turtles within a radius distance of 10 near them. Like with any disease, there is no guarantee that if you are nearby an infected person, you are going to get the disease. Therefore, we are going to code it so that there's a chance of infection. So adding another set of square brackets after ask turtles in radius 10, we will type if random hyphen float 100 and then use the less than symbol and then the number eight and then add another set of square brackets. So what we have done here is ask the blue person-shaped turtles within a radius of 10 of the infected yellow X-shaped turtles to randomly draw a number using the random dash float command from a list of numbers of up to 100. If the number drawn by that turtle is less than eight, then the uninfected turtles within a radius of 10 become infected. Now we need to show that the uninfected turtles have become infected. Like we did in the beginning of this video, we'll do so by changing their color and shape. This will require another if conditional statement and will be our last one for this sub procedure. So, we'll, so we will write if color equals blue in brackets, set color yellow, set shape X. And that is how turtles become infected. So if we go back to our user interface, we should get something like this. So if we hit set up again, we should have all of our turtles and they appear right here in the center and they're all stacked on top of each other. Uh, now some of these have turned yellow, meaning that they're infected. So if we hit go once, they're all so close together that it means all of them are going to be infected really quickly. So let's real quick change how the turtles are distributed across the landscape. So coming back down here to our NetLogo code, I'm going to add one piece of code right here just at the very beginning of the Create Turtles that is going to randomly disperse them across the landscape so they don't all start on the same place. We're going to say set XY, random X core, random Y core. So that is essentially going to put all of the turtles on a random patch uh, and they're going to have their own X coordinate and Y coordinate. So let's go ahead and recompile the code again, hit setup, and now we get a landscape that is much more dispersed. So now if we click go, we can see that those turtles are infecting each other as, as they move around the landscape. I'm gonna show you a little trick right here real quick. Um, the go button, you can actually edit that button. We have to go back into authoring mode. And if we edit that button, we can tell it to go forever. If we do this, we want to say disable until tick start. So essentially, it, you have to hit setup before it can go forever. But what, that, what that's going to do for us, if we click OK, it means that when we go back to interactive mode, we can click setup. And it means that the turtles will just continuously move. It'll keep calling that go code over and over and over again. And you can see that the ticks are going up. They're counting up. And uh, they just keep moving. now. Uh, if we want to see a little better what's going on, we can move that speed slider. And so I'm going to move that speed slider down, and now we can see them go. And it's still it's still pretty fast for now, but we'll we'll modify that in the next one. Um, but either way, you can you can set that go to to happen forever, so it'll just keep calling that go procedure. In this video, we've learned a lot of different things. We started out and we learned about how to create new agent attributes to give to the turtles. We were able to start breaking up our code into sub procedures, which helps it flow a little better. And then uh, Chelsea walked you through the entire infect sub procedure, which added a bunch of new coding terms. We learned about uh, the if conditional. We learned about the uh, random number generator, which is that random float. And we learned how to do in radius, which is which allows the turtles to interact with the world around them. See you next time.